In this video, we'll learn how to find the correct membrane shape for a shade sail with four fixed points and a cable edge. We'll start with this blue 3D polyline frame that I created earlier in Rhino. As you can see, three of the vertices are flat and the top right vertex is raised. These four vertices will define the fixed points of the mesh. In the real world, these points would probably be the tops of fixed poles. The first thing we're going to do is add a basic arbitrary shape mesh onto our 3D frame. In the last exercise, we created a fixed edge mesh, but this time we're going to create a corner mesh. To do this, we'll use the impanel model builder, found right here, and we'll set it to draw corner mesh. For this example, we'll use the default options, but you can always go into the options and vary the number of threads as needed. Click on draw corner mesh, and then select the four corners as prompted by the Rhino text window up here. Bottom left corner, bottom right corner, top right corner, and top left corner. Now we have a mesh to work with. To form find the correct shape for this mesh, what we're going to do is select the mesh and the 3D polylines, and then we're going to run the Relax Cable Edge Meshes tool, which is found right here. This will add cables on all the mesh edges and determine the natural force balance shape for the mesh. Let's delete our old mesh, and now we have a new relaxed mesh right here. You can change the weft warp stress ratio to get different shapes when you're relaxing the mesh, but for now, let's try increasing the tension in the top and bottom cables to tighten them up. To do this, we'll go to the Mesh Relax Options page. And when we get there, we'll set the cable tension ratio on the top and bottom to 2. Click OK, select the mesh and the polys again, and run the tool. OK, let's look at our new shape. If we delete our old mesh, we can now see that the top and bottom cables have been significantly tightened up, and there's a lot less slack. Sometimes, you may want to have a guy line at a corner. Impanel uses any line in Rhino as a link and attempts to maintain its length. Before we draw our line, however, we'll make sure that we have Rhino Ortho turned on in order to avoid unintended height changes. And now we're going to draw a short line starting from one corner of the model to a point in free space. Let's straighten this out a little bit. Let's get a line, and then let's start right here at the top right corner and draw a short line to about there. There's our line. And now what we're going to do is turn the mesh points on so that we can actually see and manipulate the specific nodes of the mesh. In order to do that, we're going to click on the Rhino Points On tool. Then we're going to select the mesh, click Enter, and now we have all of the mesh nodes on. And we can grab the corner mesh node and drag it. Let's specify that we are selecting the mesh point and then drag it to the end of that line. Then we'll snap it to the end of the line and then we're going to turn the mesh points off. We can do that just by clicking escape and then we'll select the polylines, the mesh, and the guideline we just made and we'll relax the model again. The relaxed mesh will accommodate the guy line and orient it correctly according to the corner forces. Now let's try some paneling. You can specify how many panels you want in the panel complete mesh options, which are found right here. As long as the panels divide directly into the mesh, you can just specify the number of panels right here. In this example, we'll use four panels. Before we start paneling, however, let's talk a little bit about the shear strain. The amount that the flat panel must distort in order to fit the desired surface is called the shear strain. You can find the shear strain in the in-panel text window. The typical shear strain limit for PVC coated polyester fabric is around 1%. If the shear strain is too high for the material, the panel will wrinkle. Whenever you're paneling, 
it's a good idea to open the in-panel text window, right here, and keep an eye on the shear strain during the paneling process in order to make sure that it stays under the prescribed limit. If it's too high, you'll need to alter your paneling measurements or settings. Now we'll select the mesh and run the Panel Complete Mesh tool. In the in-panel text window, we can check the shear strain for each panel as it is created. Let's delete our original mesh and boundary frame. We're now finished with our exercise, and we've learned how to create a corner mesh with cable edges. We've also learned how to add a corner link to our mesh, and how to panel it while checking for the shear strain.